Electrolysis, that is exactly the same thing as what happens in galvanic cells, but the other way around. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look here at what's going on in this picture. A piece of copper, or rather some copper threads, react with chlorine gas and cupric chloride forms. Let's take some notes on that too, and you to write the reaction between copper and chlorine. And in this reaction, solid copper reacts with chlorine gas to form solid cupric chloride, CuCl2S. This reaction is both spontaneous and exothermic. This means that the electrons perform some kind of work. But what would happen if we ran this reaction backwards? Is it possible to start with cupric chloride and in some way get copper and chlorine gas? Yes, you can, with the help of electricity. That is why this reaction is called electrolysis, because you split, or lyse, the cupric chloride with the help of electricity. Here's an example that I often demonstrate in my classroom. Electrolysis of cupric chloride. For this demonstration, we first need a so-called U-tube, which we fill with aqueous cupric chloride. And you draw this too. In here, we insert two graphite electrodes and connect them with a source of electricity. In this figure, the cathode ends up here to the left and the anode here to the right. After a short while, you'll notice that chlorine gas forms at the anode, and on the cathode, a layer of solid copper is deposited. But what's going on here? Let's look at how the electrons move in the circuit. From the negative pole here, electrons are pushed down into the cathode. In the aqueous cupric chloride, there are free copper ions, and they are reduced to solid copper by the excess of electrons in the cathode. We write the cathode reaction like this. Aqueous copper ions are reduced by two electrons and form solid copper. At the anode, there's instead an electron deficit or electron shortage, since the electrons move in this direction in the circuit. This means that the negatively charged chloride ions are pulled towards the anode, where they are oxidized. We write the anode reaction like this, that two aqueous chloride ions are oxidized and form chlorine gas. At the same time, two electrons are released, electrons that then move around the circuit here. What I've shown you now is a standard example of electrolysis. The aqueous cupric chloride in the U-tube is split into solid copper and chlorine gas. Another example of electrolysis is when sodium hydroxide is produced by electrolysis of sodium chloride. This is done on an industrial scale in large vats, and you draw this too. In the middle here, there's a porous membrane, that is, a membrane that lets some ions pass through, but not all. Through this opening to the right, saturated brine, that is, a saturated solution of sodium chloride, is added. This means that there will be dissolved sodium and chloride ions in this solution. Through this opening to the left, water is added. Let's also add a cathode and an anode, and join them both with a source of electricity. This means that the electrons will move like this around the circuit. So, what happens is, there will be a shortage of electrons in the anode. Because of this, the negatively charged chloride ions are pulled towards the anode. There, they are oxidized, which means they give off their valence electrons and form chlorine gas. Let's turn to a new page, and we write that by the anode, two aqueous chloride ions are oxidized to chlorine gas and two electrons. The electrons move along the circuit until they reach the cathode. But first, let's turn back and add that chlorine gas is formed and led away through this tube here. But what happens at the cathode? We have a lot of sodium ions in this solution. Perhaps they are reduced to solid sodium metal? Let's turn forward again and write something about the cathode reaction too. Could it be that a sodium ion is reduced by an electron to form solid sodium? Or could it be some other alternative? I will, and you will too, uh, write down another possible reaction, and it is that two water molecules may be reduced by two electrons and form hydrogen gas and two aqueous hydroxide ions. Let's also add the standard electrode potential for sodium. It is minus 2.71 volts, 
and the standard electrode potential for water, which is minus 0.83 volts. We'll need them in a short while. Now, consider the first reaction here. Could it be that the sodium ions are reduced to solid sodium? Let's turn to yet another page and we write like this. Which is the cathode reaction? And now think about what happens if you add a small piece of sodium to water. Do you remember? It reacts strongly with water, forming sodium ions, hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas. So if solid sodium was formed at the cathode, it would immediately react with the surrounding water and turn into a sodium ion again. Also, two hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas would form. But let's look a little bit closer on this reaction. Can you see what happens in it? The two sodium atoms are oxidized. They each release their valence electron to these two water molecules, which are reduced to hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas. And this is essentially what happens in the second reaction if we turn back here. Could it be that it is this reaction down here that takes place at the cathode? Now, let's have a look at those standard electrode potentials. The standard electrode potential for sodium is minus 2.71 volts, and for water it is minus 0.83 volts. The standard electrode potential for water is thus greater than the standard electrode potential for sodium. Do you also remember that the greater the standard electrode potential is, the weaker reduction agent it is? This means that sodium is a stronger reduction agent than water, and that any sodium atoms present will reduce water into hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas. Let's take some notes about that too. We look at the standard electrode potential and recall that a greater standard electrode potential, a high value, means that the substance is a weak reduction agent and instead a strong oxidizing agent. And since the oxidizing agent is reduced, water will be reduced rather than the sodium ions. Now let's turn back a page and encircle the reaction that is the one that really takes place. And in our little drawing, we can now draw bubbles of hydrogen gas around the cathode and that the hydrogen gas is led away through this opening. Since the water that comes in through this opening is reduced, hydroxide ions form. Together with the sodium ions, which slip through the porous membrane, a sodium hydroxide solution of very high concentration is formed. And that solution is led out through the pipe down here. Finally, don't forget that you can read more and check your learning on my homepage. You'll find a link in the description.